There's one more thing we might want to figure out on a gauge. Let's say you're using some sort of measuring instrument, a gauge, and you want to measure different ends of a baseball bat. One end smaller, one end fatter, and the various points in between. Well, if we know what our reference values are, then we can start to measure that. You want to put in your reference values for different sizes of things you're measuring, and then all the different trials of that particular thing. And I've input A, an example here. Again, this is from the Automotive Industry Action Group. So here you see a whole bunch of things measuring 2, and the reference value for this, an actual measurement with a really a good gauge, is 2, and 4, and 6, and 8, and 10. So these are your known values here, and this is where all your data goes as you try stuff. Now if you scroll on down, ideally you'd see a line that's horizontal. But as you can see here, early on, the gauge overmeasures, and as we go on, the gauge will undermeasure as the big end gets fatter and fatter. So this tells us that our gauge uh, isn't quite as accurate as it should be over the range of possible things we're measuring. Maybe we need to get a different set of gauges or a different kind of gauge that can measure this range, or we need different gauges for each of these different pieces of this puzzle. So that's how to conduct an analysis of linearity using the gauge or in our worksheet.